What's going on everybody? My name is Tenebris Infinite and for today I've got a pretty awesome video for you dudes. I've managed to figure out some of the easiest methods to obtaining these various Fenix uh, exosuit pieces here in Generation Zero. So uh, in today's video I'm going to talk about the various methods that I used to get my Fenix gear in probably about three to four days. Now, one thing to preface this video off with is that these challenges are pretty darn difficult, my dudes. Uh, having to kill something like a thousand runners is a lot of runners. And at various points, you might find it kind of difficult because you might be looking for a specific class of enemies. So one of the big things to remember in this game is that most of the map is divided up into regions, my dudes. So, uh, the initial region that you start on going up into the farmlands here, so this initial archipelago over here, going up into the farmlands, is generally populated by prototype enemies. So if you guys want to go off and kill prototype enemies in order to obtain your first couple uh, challenges, then it might be a good idea to come back to these first islands and just go on an absolute rampage killing all of the prototype enemies because they're really weak and they're really easy to kill. Um, but then, uh, the next kind of class of enemy that you can find in this game is the military class. And you can kind of find them broken up around this general region of the map, kind of beneath Muscadin here, going all the way down to around uh, the Brevikin's camping point. And that, of course, kind of cuts off at a bit of an angle here across over by Slatten. So that means that you can find a lot of military class people and there's an actual kind of spot that I used a lot uh, in, in my kind of early stages of doing this thing. In which case, I was fast traveling to uh, Angra's church because there are reliable spawns at this location. Now, one of the things you can do is you can simply spawn at Angra's church here. And when you spawn here and wind up killing the enemies, you can actually just kind of exit to the menu and jump back into the game. And when you do that, the enemies should respawn for you. There aren't many locations like this in the game where you have actual set spawns, but this is one of the few locations in the game where you can reliably come here, find yourself a couple hunters, and find yourself a couple runners, depending on what happens to spawn. First here, and then kind of coming over and around the edge here, ending off at around uh, the Villa Skogsburget, um, is where you'll be able to find Fenix class enemies very reliably. You, have, or, of course, also can come beneath this point here, and you'll be able to find uh, more Fenix-class enemies. So both of those locations will be incredibly useful when you get towards the end of the challenges. So uh, that's kind of the first tip, is paying attention to what region you're in, and paying attention to what class of enemy is in that region. So, on top of being able to use set spawn locations like Angerous Church in order to clear some of the earlier stages of these challenges, there's a couple other things that you can do to kind of ease the process of going through these challenges. So, uh, for the runners, I found that uh, one of the most reliable methods of killing a whole bunch of runners was actually doing a little bit of a trick here. And the idea behind this trick is that you kill a harvester in a big open area, an area that you can travel over really quickly utilizing the bike. And what you can do is when you kill the enemy, you head out to a despawn point, so wherever you notice the harvester kind of flick out of existence, and then you bike back to where that harvester is. And when you do that, the group of runners that spawn with that harvester will reliably respawn every single time. Now, it's not for certain that this will be around in the game forever, so uh, this is one of those things that is pretty exploity, but I would advise a lot of people to do because it simply is a massive time save. 
Uh, if I believe if you don't do that, destroying a thousand runners could take you up to a couple weeks. So it's all up to you. If you're a purist and you don't like doing exploits, again, just pay attention to the zones and uh, really seek out those large packs of runners because runners can spawn in packs of anywhere from four to six per pack spawn. So uh, if, you're, if you are hunting the runners, definitely keep your eyes out for those larger pack spawns. Here's just a quick little clip showing you guys the runner trick for respawning those runners. And another thing to kind of note to this all too is the more harvesters you can get into your respawn kind of zone, the more efficient your runner farming will be. So for the next kind of absurd amount of enemies is destroying a thousand ticks. So again, just like with the runners, I kind of found a bit of an easier way around killing a thousand ticks. It was something that was brought up before the challenges were even implemented. And honestly, the method works pretty good. Um, what you do is you find yourself a Phoenix tank because they always have a tick basket on them. You get up close to them, you let them constantly poop out the ticks, and you just you kill the ticks as they come out. Uh, it's a it's a really easy method. It only probably took me uh, maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half to kill all 1,000 ticks. So uh, if you if you have the time and the patience, find yourself a tank and just start wrecking them. Uh, just start wrecking all of the ticks that they drop out because each one will count towards uh, you completing the challenge. Uh, if you want though, if again you're a purist and you view that as a bit of an exploit of game coding, uh, you can always go off to any sort of house in the larger cities and stuff and just look for ticks inside of the houses and you can utilize that method to efficiently farm up ticks as well. Uh, I do believe that using the house method will again be far slower than using the kind of cheaty exploit method. So it's all up to your own preference as a player for how you want to approach that. Now this 
this right here, hiding in plain sight, I gotta say, it might be the most difficult out of the whole batch of challenges here. Simply because Seekers have a much lower priority in spawning than the other enemies in the game. Uh, I'm sure you guys have noticed that it's so much easier to find a pack of hunters than it is to actually find a couple of seekers in this game. Uh, so the thing about seekers is when they pack spawn, they pack spawn in groups of one, two, three, sometimes. I, I've seen three as a maximum. Um, of course, you can always catch instances where more than one pack has spawned in an area. Uh, but that's all up to RNG and all up to luck. Sadly, there is no way of manipulating Seekers or finding a set area for Seekers to spawn. So what I say is probably the best method to farming up uh, Seekers is utilizing the Alvaret Plains here. Uh, the Alvaret Plains are really, really good because it's a huge flat area. There's a number of really good kind of perched mountains all around the outside of the Alvaret Plains. And utilizing those vantage points, you'll be able to spot the Seekers from a much further distance. And uh, this is another kind of pro tip for it. Definitely try to take down the Seekers before they set off their alarm, if you're choosing to just go for Seekers, because otherwise you're going to maximize your amount of time probably tenfold if you're setting off a seeker every time you try to take one out. So sniping seekers is probably the best approach to actually going through that challenge as quickly as possible. And again, utilizing a location like Alvaret Plains or the uh, F-23 over B Air Base, uh, just down here, uh, kind of near Hallebach and Farm, because uh, this little farmland area, especially coming up and along this road, is again one of those nice kind of flat areas with not much tree coverage and not much coverage so that you can kind of spot the Seekers really easy and take them down. Now the nice thing about the Seekers is that you only have to kill 250 of them. So in reality, if you, if you just go off and you hunt like a madman, You'll be able to clear through the Seekers in probably a day if you just focus on it, or a couple days if you don't focus on it like I did. Um, next up, we're going to talk about the Hunters here. So you have to kill 250 Hunters, and uh, for the Hunters, I found it easiest for myself to just just go for the Fenix guys and just uh, kill as many of them as I possibly could. So. There are those locations that I talked about before, like St. Angris Church and Muscadin Port. Uh, both of those locations uh, will respawn the hunters in the area, so you can utilize those locations if you want to, to clear up everything up to the military uh, stage of challenges. Uh, so that's the third stage of challenges. So if you want to, you totally can just farm these locations and quit to menu and jump back into the game and kill them off. But I found, personally, that the easiest method was looking for the large packs of the Hunters. So the Hunters can spawn in packs of four to six. So looking for the packs of six Hunters is a very reliable way of getting lots of Hunter kills. Uh, so good locations for that, again, are Alvaret Plains because you're able to just see a very large distance, uh, the Overby Air Base, and actually Ostervik is a great location for finding hunters. Uh, the other added benefit to that too is Ostervik is one of the most urban settings you can get in this game for combat, so you can have a lot of fun kind of combat encounters with the hunters in this area. Alongside that, Ostervik and a number of other locations, I'm sure as you guys have noticed so far, are kind of janky <laughs> as of update 1.10. And enemies will sometimes just kind of stick around and shoot buildings for no reason and get aggroed for no reason, but then kind of do nothing. So um, it's one of those locations where you can kind of use that to your advantage a little bit when you're hunting for these challenges. So now for the second hardest, I would say, out of all the challenges. First hardest being hiding in plain sight. 
The second hardest would be fuel to the fire. So looking for harvesters is a little bit difficult, especially in 1.10. Uh, it seems like harvesters have less of a priority to spawn nowadays. Uh, the other thing too is, as of 1.10, this location that used to be a harvester kind of hotspot <laughs> uh, doesn't quite do the same thing anymore. It doesn't seem like there are spawns of like three to four harvesters in this area, or at least not what I've noticed. Uh, if they do spawn in this area for you, I would totally advise utilizing this location to kill as many harvesters as you possibly can. But if they don't, there's a couple locations that I found are pretty reliable for harvester spawns. One of them is just outside of Muscadin Fort here. You can generally kind of find a harvester spawned near this overturned police car, or I believe it's overturned. Uh, just outside of the safe house here at Musket and Port. And then there's also good old Garpamar. <laughs> I talked about Garpamar ages ago on my channel, but it's still a really great, reliable location for finding harvesters. Same with outside of Anil 118 uh, Ferilla. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. But <laughs> you can find harvesters outside of this place in the forest, on the road, kind of down by this little crossroad here. Uh, and so those locations are really reliable. Again, also you can use a location like Alvaret Plains because it's a big flat area where you can see a ton of stuff from a big distance. And then also Overby Air Base for the same benefit. And then I found actually that um, this area down here, this kind of like southern coast area, uh, was not reliable for harvester spawns. I only found maybe one or two of my harvesters down here, and I found actually most of my harvesters by utilizing Muscadin and uh, Anil Ferula. Uh, so <laughs> next up is the tanks last kind of challenge here. So for the tanks uh, It's it's pretty easy for the tanks because they have from what I've noticed the highest priority in spawning So you can find tanks friggin everywhere across the map nowadays uh, Alvaret Plains, Stenmira uh, Garpamar again, Anil Ferala uh, outside of Muscadin you could just find tanks everywhere, and honestly, my dudes, the tanks are the easiest challenge in this game. Uh, so, I would, if anything, I would say target the tanks first. Kind of do the tanks and the ticks in succession, and uh, you'll wind up getting at least two decent sets of gear really, really quickly. Uh, it should only take you maybe a, a, an, like a couple hours to find all the tanks and kill all the ticks from them. So in the end, uh, killing 50 tanks is no real difficult task. Uh, so yeah, after that, um, with those quick, simple little tips, you should be able to complete these challenges within a couple days. Again, uh, I, I wish that this game had more set spawns in the world, because that way it would make something like this a little bit easier to route out. But for now, really just paying attention to your zones, paying attention to the terrain you're in, and utilizing all of that to your advantage is some of the best things you can do for yourself during these challenges. So the last tip that I can give you guys here is to utilize all of the tips that I've given in the past. Things like those hunter counters to take down hunters really, really quickly. Things like the tank tips that I've given to take down the tanks really quickly. The harvesters as well. Um, and utilizing the health stacking if you're in a situation where you're fighting tons and tons of enemies. Utilizing the quick cover tips that I've given in order to uh, kind of keep yourself defended while you're fighting those large groups of enemies. And, uh, you know, all the other tips that I've given, they will maximize your efficiency in taking down these robots quickly and intelligently and uh, should lead to you having the smoothest approach throughout these challenges here. 
But uh, that's kind of it for these challenges. Hopefully you guys have a fun time hunting these robots. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a great reward getting this kind of very unique item set and uh, vanity item set for uh, completing these challenges. I'm going to have a video coming out in just a couple days where I'm going to be talking about how these challenges can be improved in the future though. Um, I do think that this first iteration of challenges is nice and the reward of something that I've kind of asked for uh, is really really cool um, but I do think that the challenges could use a little bit of work around the edges to make them more rewarding to the player and more beneficial to the player. So definitely keep your eyes out for that video coming out probably later on this week. Um, but until then, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Until then, peace.